Testing I hit, I hit, 11. I hit record and it changed everything. Ah, All right. It's the auto mode we got going on. Got it. So, my first experience at the village um, really just started with a, a Google search, churches near me. I've always kind of, um, I've been kind of sporadic over my life as far as going to church and I always wanted to try and attend churches near me, near me you know, in the neighborhoods that I lived in. So the village showed up in that search. So I showed up one Saturday afternoon, or Sunday afternoon rather, and um, it was uh, kind of strange, you know. It's just people kind of shuffling, uh, trying to figure out where they go because they couldn't really figure out where everybody was heading. Seemed like the kitchen was the place to be, but soon enough, everybody settled in the living room. And um, I think the thing that really struck me most was just how easily people would just come up to me, even though they never knew me, and you know, just started telling me, not, not asking me questions about me, but started telling me about themselves. And started telling me about you know what what they were struggling with, how they felt God was speaking into their lives, and I was just really taken aback that um, people really talked about their relationships with God that way, and with just about anybody. The, the first person I spoke to was uh, Ashton, who, you know, was probably maybe 14 or 15 at the time. And, you know, I was just really taken aback just how comfortable she was and secure she was just talking to people at the village um, and just kind of giving me the lay of the land. Um, shortly after that, um, I found myself holding a baby. I, I was I was holding um, it was uh, young Hazel at the time, you know, and she was just weeks old. And I don't know how it happened that I'm sitting outside holding this baby, and I'm just thinking, boy, this is this is really weird. I'm looking around, like you know, is this, is this okay? And Samantha Bloom is standing next to me, and um, I said, is this, is this is this okay? Like I really don't even know whose baby this is. And she goes, yeah, apparently that that's okay. We you know we we, we do that here. And we started to talk some more, and, you know, she just really just launched into talking about, you know, what she was struggling with at the time, you know, looking for a job, and just not sure what God was going to call her into doing. Um, but I was just really, really struck with how, you know, vulnerable she was, just talking about what she was struggling with, but um, just how aware she was that God was speaking into her life. When I came to the village, um, I remember sitting with Pastor Eric over uh, over lunch and just talking about my life and just, I remember saying, uh, you know, I've, I've, I've led a really charmed life, man. I got it, I've, I've got it really good. And, you know, about that time, things in my life really started to get challenging. I had um, my own health challenges, my wife had a health challenge. Um, you know, lost family members, you know, some some of old age, some not. I mean, just things got really difficult. And um, I, I was able to not just endure that, but just really lean into God and really just try and discern what he was trying to say to me through some of these experiences. And part of what... Um, I felt him speaking to me was to really start to lean deeper into relationships and just seeing that so many of, you know, my relationships were really casual, not terribly intimate, and that I didn't really have people who liked me because they knew me. You know, people like me because I'm funny and I could make them laugh or cook them a good meal or whatever it is I did. But, um, my relationships with the village have really been around, I guess, the things that seem that they really matter. Um, just 
just the parts where we hurt, the parts where um, we feel inadequate, the parts where um, I feel less than, than really what God created me to be, or just created me as being. So it was just the way that I, I was drawn into to listening to God's voice through these experiences that really changed things for me. Shortly, well, I've probably been coming to the village for a few years, um, Stephanie and I had, and um, Stephanie was not working at the time. She is uh, a retired social worker, and she had started um, working through this organization called Foster Ed that um, sought to improve educational outcomes for foster kids, which are, were pretty abysmal. And um, she was working with this family of six kids, um, five of them school age, and helping them with schoolwork. And eventually, uh, five of those kids got adopted um, by their uh, aunt, but um, the sixth one um, did not just was not going to work out and um, Stephanie um, you know I always wondered about him and and how he was doing and she happened to talk to his caseworker and just ask about him and she said what's well, funny you ask because um, he's in the foster system not doing well we've got to move him and um, we're really desperate for a place to, to place him uh, can you help us out and um, you know, I came home from work and Stephanie said, well, I got something I think we should talk about. And, you know, she just laid out uh, the situation and it became pretty clear that what was going to happen is that, you know, not only was DJ going to stay for a while, but DJ was going to stay with us forever. And that, um, you know, a voice I heard, it was never even a decision. I mean, it wasn't even... It never presented to me as something that you should do this, or maybe this is something you could do. I felt very strongly the voice of God telling me, this will be done for my glory. And that, you know, how do, how do you argue with that? I mean, there's not much, to, not much to say in response to that, except worship and to do, and to, and to answer that voice.